What's up, you mouth breathers? It's been a while. Good to see you again. It is Trailer Park Jimmy Kimmel here, and we are gonna talk about the different types of saw blades today with some amazing 19,000 frames per second footage. Now, I released an in-depth saw blade video in April, uh, which is linked below and in the corner here, and you guys really liked it. And so, I wanted to get the high-speed camera out and get some really cool footage, and I think we got some footage that has never been seen before. Now, I know there's been saw blades in slow motion before, but I figured out a way to capture what the gullets do, uh, which I'll, you'll see here how we did it in a second that I don't think has ever been done before. Before we get into the saw blades, let's talk about a couple things just to show the difference uh, in rip and cross cutting. Now, when you look at a piece of wood, rip cutting is where you cut along the grain and cross cutting is where you cut across. So this kerf you see in this blade, that is a cross cut, whereas rip cut is along the grain. The best way I've ever seen that personified is with a piece of rope. Now, the pieces of a rope are braided together or woven together uh, to, to create a rope. So the long way is that is like a rip cut and when you cut across it, that's like a cross cut. And you can see a rip cut is much easier. You run your knife along, I'm gonna chop my hand off here. You run your knife along the grain and it takes a lot less work to make the cut. So you can see a, a rip cut is much, much easier because of the way the fibers go. But when you go to cross cut, you have to actually sever the fibers instead of going along in between them. And so you have to make a lot more passes. And that's why a rip blade has less teeth than a cross cut blade. Uh, and I'm gonna show you that in high speed footage here. Before we get into the footage, let's just talk about the different types of blades really quickly so we can establish a few things so that when we look at the footage, we can be thinking about the differences in the different blade geometries and types. Now. Three types of saw blades. There's probably a million saw blades, but three basic types of saw blades you're gonna have in your shop. Uh, ATB, alternate tooth bevel, FTG, flat top grind. There's different variations of that, but in a combination blade, uh, you're gonna have FTG and ATB, where you're gonna have 40 alternate tooth bevel blades, uh, which have the different angles. And then every 11th tooth, or there'll be uh, 10 of the flat top grind, and then 40 of the alternate tooth bevel. Rip blades have much less teeth because they need to remove much more material. They also have a steeper rake angle because they're scooping more material. General purpose blades are in between that and cross cut, which has a much less rake angle because it is severing the fibers and it has a much steeper bevel on the, the blade. So the, the ATB is much steeper because you want that knife cut to be severing the fibers. Crosscut blades for like a miter saw, they tend to have even less of a rake angle because of the way that you enter the blade from the top of the piece of wood rather than uh, you know on a crosscut sled where you would encounter the front of the blade. But they have the same amount of tooth bevel for severing fibers. So let's get into the footage here and I, I found a really cool way to figure out what the gullets do. I'm gonna show you here in a minute that we did with acrylic. So let's start with rip cutting. We found that when we tried to shoot these clips with the slow-mo camera, that we weren't getting the full effect of what the blade did because we were cutting on the edge of the piece of wood so that obviously it could be seen on camera. So what we figured out, we took a piece of two inch acrylic and we taped it over where the cut would be and just moved the fence over like a thou so that the blade wouldn't scratch the acrylic and we were able to catch some really, really cool shots here. So this is a rip blade doing what it should be doing, which is rip cutting. Now, when you watch this, you can see that when you have a very long cut, you need to one, stop heat. Heat is the enemy of sharpness. So these blades you see have much, much larger gullets for two reasons. One, it traps air and pushes it into the cut, which cools the cut down. As well as you can see here, as the blade is cutting the material, the sawdust is going perfectly into the gullet. And that gullet has a lot of room because it's removing way, way more sawdust, and then it exits out the bottom of the cut. One thing that is probably impossible to catch on a table saw is how a saw blade exits the board. And that's where you get your tear out. Whenever you have plywood, all that stuff, it happens on the bottom of the board because it's not when it enters because that is pushing the fibers down, it's when it exits. Now, because of the shape and angle of a rip blade, you're gonna get much less tear out when you're ripping because of the way it exits and there's less contact because there are less teeth. And that's why rip blades have 24 teeth, you know, approximately, so different companies will do different things. Our next clip here is we're looking at a general purpose blade. Now this will get the job done, but on bigger, longer cuts, it's gonna build up heat more and those gullets are smaller. You can see here, it's removing material, but material is starting to get outside of the kerf and into the acrylic here, and that's because as the blade gets down towards the bottom of the cut, those gullets are filling up with sawdust. 
And then just for S's and giggles, uh, we also did a crosscut blade here. And you can see that how inefficient this is. And when you're pushing a rip blade, you want to go at a faster speed than when you're crosscutting because otherwise heat starts to build up. But a crosscut blade is going to stop you from doing that. All those teeth need to make a cut before it can advance. And so not only is it doing way, way more cutting, much more heat buildup, uh, but those gullets you can see are filling up right away and they just completely fill with sawdust. You can see the ones, you know, the three or four teeth towards the bottom of that cut are just ejecting sawdust all over the place. And when we get into cross cutting here, you're gonna see that although they still are filling up because they are technically removing the same amount of material, it's okay because the cut distance is much, much shorter. And so as you do a cross cut, you know, you may be only going two to four inches, whereas with a rip cut you're doing, you could potentially be doing eight feet. The heat buildup is much more on a rip cut than a cross cut. So then here's the same thing. Let's see what a cross cut is supposed to look like. Now remember a cross cut has that much sharper tooth angle. The tooth is angled back a little bit more, but it has very, very sharp cross cut teeth. Uh, and that's because you need to sever the fibers both when entering and exiting the board. And so you can see when you use a cross cut blade with so many more teeth than a rip blade, it's going to sever those fibers perfectly, like sawing with the, the knife that I did in the beginning across the rope, or like if you're using a dovetail saw, it's gonna be a slower cut, but it's gonna be a much, much nicer cut. And that's why a cross cut blade is so useful to have. You can see it's just absolutely doing its job here. You don't see any pieces of wood flying up from the top, which would be chip out, and it's making a beautiful cut. Now, let's look at what happens when you use a rip blade to do a cross cut. Now you can see that there's a significant amount of distance that passes before, between each tooth. And now granted, this is happening microscopically because you know this is slowed down one second equals 13 minutes of this footage. So what we're seeing is, is you know, milliseconds here over the course of this entire clip. But you can see that each tooth essentially crashes into that fiber. It's not severing each fiber. It's sort of the top maybe severing a fiber, but then the next tooth is coming behind it and sort of scooping out a big chunk and doing a bunch of fibers at once. Just like the rip blade, it can carry sawdust away, but it's not gonna give you that clean cut. And you're not as worried about heat buildup or sawdust removal on a cross cut because it is a much shorter cut. And then if we look at a general purpose blade, again, has sort of some of the same drawbacks as a rip blade, but it does have more teeth and it also has an angle to it. You know, the rip blade, that flat tooth is sort of crashing into the fibers, whereas with a general purpose or a combination blade, you're getting that angled tooth bevel. Um, I believe the general purpose is 30 degrees with a rake angle of 12 degrees. So you're getting a lot of the characteristics of a crosscut blade with less teeth. So it will get the job done, certainly, but my rip and crosscut blade, I am really certain to protect in my shop because those are those blades that you use when you need great great cuts. Whereas my general purpose blade is kind of what I use for uh, milling down lumber and getting it ready to use. But when I'm making those final cuts, uh, I like to switch over to those blades and using your rip blade regularly. Uh, and then switching over to those blades ensures that those blades stay sharper longer, although these are very resharpenable. So that's the difference between rip and cross cutting on a table saw. Now, I got these really cool shots of a miter saw, uh, which sort of show why um, that rake angle is so much different on a miter blade. The first clip here, uh, this was a suggestion from my boy Jay Bates here. Uh, he wanted to see where dust collection on a miter saw goes. So we took a wide shot, but you can see from the shot where the blade enters. It enters in the center of the board. In fact, this was this cut right here. We started from the top and just went all the way through. But check out the direction that the sawdust goes and you can see uh, why that's gonna have much less of a rake angle because of where it's entering. It's entering at a different place on the board. Now here's a tighter shot here with the acrylic where you can see how it's entering the board and how the last part to get cut is gonna be the back of the board. Now I don't think we got this one in very good focus, but I think you get the idea. So let's talk about these blades. These are the CMT blades that I got the, I was lucky to get a chance to use them a month before they came out. Uh, CMT wants to compete with Forest and these are real, honestly some of the best blades I've ever used. They certainly are Forest quality, but uh, because they were so happy with what you guys did last time I talked about them, they've again given us the 40% off, which is you know 30% off of retail plus another 10% if you use my discount code below. Now. Look at these blades. These are the same ones I've had since March. I use them every day. They're the only blades I use and they're in phenomenal condition. I use the uh, CMT cleaner that they sell and you just spray it on and wipe it off. It gets rid of any pitch buildup, but it really, these blades show almost no wear. 
They're as sharp as the day I bought them, but they have tons of that high molecular structure carbide in the teeth so you can resharpen them many, many times. In fact, I think Forrest will resharpen them. Uh, that's where I plan on sending them back to when they do need a sharpening. Now, when you're gonna buy blades, it's best to have all three, the, the general purpose, the cross cut, and the rip blade. I personally think rip blade is the, the most useful secondary blade over a combination or general purpose, and then cross cut. Uh, rip, because it just, if you're milling material and you're using the wrong blade, it burns the edges, which means you then have to go back and process them again. And that is a lot of work, especially if you're milling a lot of lumber for a big project. Whereas a cross cut blade, you can probably get by with the general purpose, but if you're doing a ton of joinery, you know, certainly a good cross cut blade is worth its weight in gold. You know, rip blade I use a lot more, but cross cut is like the one I super protect. You know, I make sure it's like wrapped up all the time and not exposed to the elements because when you need those high quality cross cuts, it makes a big difference. You can also get one for your miter saw. Uh, I have a 12 inch miter saw, so uh, I had to get a special blade for that. But if you have a regular 10 inch, you could definitely switch the blades around. Uh, you put your cross cut in it back and forth. And then CMT also has the dado stack. This all has that chromium coating on it, which is amazing. Uh, it reduces heat and heat, it's just like the Astra coating from Bits and Bits, uh, heat is the enemy of sharpness. So the better the heat coating, the longer the blade stays sharp. But again, you can resharpen them. They have a ton of carbide on them. When you look at these shots here, the carbide in there is so much bigger than like the Freud or the Diablos, you know, the blades you get at Home Depot. In my last video, I said the Freud and Diablos weren't resharpenable. Somebody said they were. Look at the difference. The, the carbide, the chunk of carbide on this is so much bigger than those that it's just not even a question. And saw blades is one of those times where buying cheap actually costs so much more because you can't reuse them. Whereas these blades could go through 10 or 20 sharpenings last years and years and years before you ever need to replace them. So, you know, the difference of if you rip a bunch of maple with some $50 blade is going to be dead after that project. Whereas, you know, one of these blades, you rip a hundred board feet of maple, you can send it in to get sharpened. So it's one of those times where it's buy once, cry once because they're going to last you forever. Take a look below. They're linked. There's a discount code for you guys because we crushed them, but they did sell out pretty quickly last time. So I apologize, uh, but I'm sure you guys are gonna get right on it. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this high speed footage. We don't have much more left. I think there's a couple more videos, but uh, we're gonna get back into some of the, uh, the woodworking projects that we were doing before we rented the camera and, and get into some of that. We're gonna build a set for the watch channel, uh, which is also linked below. So we've got a horology channel, gentlemen and ladies. Mine's out of gutter. We're gonna start the Horology channel and uh, we got a bunch of really cool things coming up coming into the holiday season. So guys, thanks for watching. If you wanna support the channel, head over to the Cat's Moses store, pick up one of my new aprons, a stop block or a dovetail jig. Thanks for watching. Stay safe in the shop, wash your hands. Have a wonderful day.